Welcome to Y Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada, and where down in our basement there are no rats. The snakes got them all. Just kidding. Lesson 5 in our Canadian Amateur Radio Training Series, Repeaters and Radiophones. This one's really easy, pretty short, little bit of memorization. You should easily be able to go for 95% on this quiz. Why do we have repeaters? Well, handhelds and other mobile devices, think car or stuff you carry around, have limited power. You can go to some pretty scary power in a car device, but in general, the devices are small. The repeater retransmits for us with more power. Now, Anyone with a basic, basic with honors license can use it, but if you want to set one up, you need your advanced license. And this works because of duplex communication, where we transmit on one frequency and receive on another. And that way, well, they say you can handle more volume of users, but really, it's if they were transmitting on the same frequency, as you're sending on, you'd be interfering with each other. And this isn't a delayed retransmission. It is retransmitted as you are transmitting. Frequencies for repeaters. Okay. Generally, they're used at 30 megahertz and above in the VHF and UHF ranges. Those ranges, again, are allowed for basic uh, qualification. 29.5 megahertz is a magic number for the repeater questions. You can't retransmit below this frequency unless you have the basic with honors qualification. But with basic, you can be retransmitted in 29.5 to 29.7 megahertz. Okay. And of course, above 30 megahertz where basic is allowed to operate. Stability and overmodulation. Okay, so these repeaters, radio telephony repeaters, you, you'll never hear a ham radio operator say that, but it's in the Industry Canada question bank. Anyway, they're very popular, heavily shared. Okay, unmodulated signals. So without carrying your voice is only allowed for brief tests and especially so in those precious bands below 30 megahertz. Okay. Up to 148 megahertz, and try to remember 150. That's a barrier for, uh, if, you, if you remember from test four, uh, the amount of uh, bandwidth you're allowed to use goes up when you're above 150 megahertz. So above 150, you can get in some pretty crazy stuff like our uh, fast scan TV and things like that. So anyway, up to that level, you have to have good frequency stability. That means a quality radio that's going to be right on the frequency. And that frequency in the jargon of the test should be comparable to old style crystals. Okay. Then overmodulation protection is required. So that's to prevent you from using more bandwidth than you require. Okay, so in those frequencies, overmodulation protection is required in your radio. It's not something you have to do or add to your radio because of the heavy use and sharing of those frequencies. Okay, how much can you use? You can use 100%, but don't use more than 100%. Sounds complicated, but it's simple. You have to have overmodulation protection that protection can allow you to use 100% of uh, your allocated bandwidth. That's it. Simple. Take quiz number five. Short and easy. A little bit of memoriz memorization, but because it's so short, go for that 95% on this test, and as always, should be achievable after three passes. So again, we're YLab. The makerspace at https colon slash slash ylab.ca and all the links required are in the comments below.